want to welcome you to another Pod for Israel, and we're diving into the holidays again this year. I have with us Dr. Eris Soraf, and we're going to dive into Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. That's and right. so, what does it mean prophetically? What does it mean in the context of the scriptures and throughout history? Again, this, the deeds of the Father are a sign to the sons. That's a famous Jewish saying, and I think it's a truth in scripture. We see that that pattern is prophecy. Absolutely. And so the Feast of, of uh, Tabernacles really, in a lot of ways, it kind of closes the circle uh, of, of the appointed days. And as you, as, you, as you said, I mean, it's very important to, to understand that it's appointed days. Right. So the, the root of the word in Hebrew of appointed is that it has a purpose. So God gives us the circle of the holy days for a purpose. And the yeah. purpose is to show us his plan of salvation. And, uh, you know, Sukkot or Tabernacles is, if we can put in those terms, is, is kind of the purpose. Mm. It's the ultimate um, kind of flourishing of, of God's kingdom and, and, and so, uh, so on, uh, ultimately. In the Bible, in the book of Leviticus 23, we read that the Feast of Tabernacles is uh, the time when all the nation gathers, and even though they may have already built in themselves homes and, you know, they live in, in permanent housing, they build those shacks or mm -hmm. temporary right. booths that, and, and they're going to sleep there for a week. This is the fall season in Israel, so it could be very sunny and nice, but it could also be rainy. Yeah. And the purpose, God says, is so that you be reminded of how it used to be for your forefathers as they, you know, kind of uh, journeyed through the wilderness. And that's kind of yeah. the housing they had. Right. And we, it kind of reminds us that we are, we are pilgrims in this world. Hmm. I mean, Amen. we walk through this, you know, this world, but we're not of here. I mean, there's a bigger home. There's a kingdom we hmm. walk towards. And uh, that's one, the one thing that uh, uh, Tabernacles is reminding us. Yeah, I, you know... With a family, it's really amazing because, yeah. I mean, your kids love it. It's, it's one of their most favorite holidays because you get to decorate the sukkah. You, you sleep overnight right. in the sukkah, which is torture for us parents. But sure. the kids <laughs> love it. Yeah. But it's your rite of passage. You need to do it. And the kids just absolutely adore it because you're decorating and you get to eat inside of and share a meal. And the whole idea is you're bringing in people. That's it's, right. It's, it's about the ushpazin getting... Ushpazin, the community or, or hosting. Right. Yeah. So that, that's a very big... And there's some really beautiful elements that were added uh, through the generations. Right. And ushpazin or, or you know, hosting others is a big component. So it's an opportunity to connect with the uh, community in a wider way, not just family, and but also, right. of course, friends and neighbors. And, and the Torah actually commands you to, to bring in the fatherless, to bring in the stranger, right. the widow, the orphan. Like, you know, so this is God's heart from the very beginning. Um, even before the prophets spoke of that, God spoke of that, that, that this is what you're to do. It's not just you party for yourself, you celebrate to yourself, but you're to share God's goodness and to celebrate God's goodness. It, it always reminds me, and it's very timely. I don't think, I mean, when Jesus spoke the parable, about uh, you know the the rich man that did a wedding, and you know he invited people and people didn't come. He said, "Okay, go by the wayside, call yeah, you know, call everybody, great. and um, just bring them in." Yeah, you know, and uh, kind of reminds us of the uh, wedding feast of the Lamb, right? And in some way, the Feast of Tabernacles points to this. We're going to chat about that when we talk about uh, uh, the prophetic fulfillment, but I think that's part of it. Uh, other interesting and I think beautiful, well, that's actually has biblical roots. So you have the four species of plants that kind of remind you of the plentiful and variety, actually, uh, that God is giving you in the land. So you have the citrus, you have the palm branch, the willow branch, and what was the fourth one? Uh, the, the myrtle? Myrtle. There we go. So, um, and they have different representation, you know, right. in tradition and so on but uh, basically celebrating God's plentiful and goodness. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And you, you shake them up and down and left and right, north, south, east, and west, you know, praising God. And again, it's that celebration, though. It, mm -hmm. The contrast is amazing. We went from Yom Kippur, and we discussed that in our last podcast. If, right. you, haven't, if you haven't heard that, you got you to gotta listen to that. But you go from the contrast of this day of repentance and mourning and fasting to this incredible celebration, and so we also see this 
through the other writings of Ezra and Nehemiah. Yes. And I think one of the most famous, uh, the famous Feast of Tabernacles there ever was. That's right. That's right. And you see it in, in uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 and then 9 also actually when the whole, all of the people gathered. It's really emphasized it was everyone. So kind of the unity of right. the people. And uh, probably for the first time in at least a thousand years from uh, King Hezekiah, everybody, the whole nation celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. Right. And the amazing thing, and I think that's the focal point, the reason they did it and the focus of the celebration was the Word of God. Yeah. And this awakening that has begun on the Day of Trumpet in the times of Nehemiah carried on to the Feast of Tabernacles when you know the Word of God was the center, was the mm. key, was the uh, centerpiece that people gathered around mm. and got renewed. And there was an amazing uh, spiritual revival. Uh, symbolically, we read that the people have met in the, um, in the square before the water gate. Right. Now, symbolically, because about 400 years after Nehemiah's uh, time, Jesus himself, the Messiah mm. himself, was in that very same square hmm. near the water gate. And he shouted on the Feast of Tabernacles, whoever thirsts can come to me and out of his innermost being uh, will flow rivers of living waters. And it's not accidental that Jesus is talking about the living waters because through the water gate on the seventh day, the big day, the great day of the feast, the high priest and a whole... Um, uh, parade. A train of priests, yeah. Yeah, of priests, and, and behind them, the people would go down with this golden cup to the uh, Siloam uh, Creek. That he would fill it with water, and everybody else would fill buckets of water. And the parade was walking back to the temple through the water gate, and it would pour it as a symbol in tabernacles for God's Spirit. Um, you know, coming, cleansing, yeah, right. cleansing or, or flooding in a, in a positive way. Uh, the earth. Hmm. So there's a great messianic expectation mm -hmm. in the Feast of Tabernacles. We read in the book of Zechariah, and now as we gaze to the purpose, to the fulfillment, to the prophetic fulfillment, we read in Zechariah, especially 14, that it's a day where all nations, all the nations on the earth will come and will worship the God of hosts in Jerusalem. And um, it's amazing to read that even the you know, the covering of the of, of the heads of the horses or, or the pots will be considered holy unto the Lord. Yeah. Very same expression that the high priest under the Mosaic Covenant hmm. had on his forehead. So um, it's uh, a time where the Word of God, and we read in Micah chapter 4 and in Isaiah, this is a time where all nations are coming to the mountain of the Lord to seek the face of the Messiah and hear the Word of God directly from him. So again, the focus wow. on the Word of God. That's beautiful. So we see the prophetic fulfillment. We saw there was the trumpets, uh, you know, the heralding Yeshua's return. We saw the repentance on Yom Kippur and the atonement made and finished. And then the celebration, which in a, in a ways I see, this is the wedding festival of the Lamb. That's right. And we're, we're looking forward, you know, again, we talked about it, that the, uh, that the festivals, they look back at what God did they look to the events of that time, but they also look forward to what the Messiah will do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, will do. And so there's so much symbolism, you know, even as you discuss like this, that we're tabernacling right, right now, you know, in this flesh and blood. And we're just wondering, we're sojourners, we're temporary dwellers. Mm -hmm. Even if you own a house, you're still a temporary dweller Absolutely. in this land. And so, you know, it's, um, <laughs> it's kind of, I love it the way you mentioned about how our physical frame, you yeah. know, we call it's called in scripture our tent, you know, our temporary dwelling. Right. And um, I think as people, we get to focus on ourselves so much, we forget that we're actually an embodied spirit. Yeah. So the real you mm -hmm. is not the flesh and blood you see or feel, it's actually a soul that is cloths in a temporary dwelling place that's our body. Right. And that's why, you know, when you talk about when Yeshua came, it says, and, and the word became flesh and tabernacled upon us. Exactly right. So exactly right. it's a beautiful time. So this is a great time of celebration. It's a great time. Uh, again, this is a time of salvation. This is a time like what we said in the last episode. This is 
when I, I believe one of the biggest, biggest signs when Yeshua said, if you'd believed Moses, you would have believed me because Moses spoke of me. These festivals that were a centerpiece of the Torah, these festivals all scream the message of our Messiah. Amen. Absolutely. And 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 I would I would urge all our listeners and those that are watching, you know, this is there's always a good time to pray for salvation right. of family right. members and and everyone that's it's around us. But I would ask for your prayers for the nation of Israel mm. as we enact, because in all those appointed days, there are, I mean, and we sit in the teaching of Jesus, but God gave us different symbolic acts that yeah. we do, like the four species, like the dwelling in the tabernacle, mm. that, uh, or the Passover, of course, that kind of enacts the plan of salvation. Right. And, and in the nation of Israel, we still do that. Yeah. Most of us do it still in unbelief. We still do it, but we do it in unbelief. We don't understand even what we're doing. You do the ritual. You do, exactly right. And when you see the Messiah, I say, okay, yeah. this is why I've been doing it all these years. So i um, like to ask for prayer, for salvation at this time. And I would say even that kind of what you were saying, even along the lines of that we would approach these festivals with a childlike heart because, you know, the older we get, the more it's ritual kind of can creep in. But, but you know, from Ezra and Nehemiah, from that time of that great revival, it's just they read the word of God and they said, oh, wait, oh, we're, and then like, like kids, they ran through all the hills, you know, finding all the, building the tabernacles and just like, it was the most joyous celebration. I guess when we approach these festivals with childlike, with a childlike heart. It's really of, beautiful. Uh, it's so beautiful and God can work in such powerful ways. So Lord, we just ask that you would open up the hearts of, of your Jewish people around the world, Lord, that you would be lifted up. Lord, open up our hearts to your word. And that as we study this uh, festival, as we study uh, the prophecies, what's even to come, that we would have a childlike excitement, the childlike heart that would that would just yearn for your kingdom to come in our life and your your physical kingdom, that you would return soon. Bo Yeshua, come in our days. And Lord, we're just asking for your spirit to be poured out, this Sukkot, this Feast of Tabernacles, upon us in Yeshua's name. Amen. If this touched your heart, will you help pay it forward so that others can hear the same message of life? Partner with our team to bring the gospel to Israel and the nations.